Hey guys, Tacoma Cyclist here and the Boogeyman, as always. Today we're going to talk to you a little bit about Zwift racing. Uh, it's that time of the year where we're kind of relegated to indoors, working on trainers because it's rainy or dark or cold. Uh, rule 5, whatever. Anyway, we're going to talk a little bit about Zwift racing, give you some tips. Maybe if you haven't done Zwift racing before, this is a great opportunity to learn a little bit about it. If you've done it, didn't like it, maybe some of these tips will help you so that you do like it. So we're going to give you a few tips and we're going to talk through some of this uh, along the way. Uh, stay tuned for some more videos. We haven't really had any uh, published in a while and that's because the Boogeyman and I have been really busy either training or racing. Uh, not to mention my accident. I spent a lot of time training uh, to get back into form after that. So um, stay tuned. We do have more coming and we'll hopefully put out a lot over this training season over this winter. So first of all, make sure that you have your stuff ready and by your stuff, I mean, your towel, you're gonna need that. Water bottle, make sure it's filled. Make sure you take a pre-ride pee. Nothing worse than getting halfway through the race, realizing you gotta do some business. Have your fan at the ready. In this case, we've got a remote control fan. As the boogeyman's demonstrating here. And we can change the speed and, and turn it on and off uh, from our position, which is great. Second, make sure you hop on your bike and warm it up first. Warm up your trainer, warm up your legs. Uh, these races start pretty hot. In fact, I'll show you here in a second. When we get going, we're gonna kick off uh, well above your power range that's estimated on the race. Uh, but most importantly, make sure you spend time on the trainer, getting the trainer warmed up, and then also calibrated. If you enter a race and you haven't calibrated your trainer, you're gonna find that could be way off. Either it's too high, you're going to get disqualified because you, you uh, overshoot the numbers. Or it's too low and you kill yourself trying to get uh, to try to stay with the pack and your numbers are too low. Uh, little temperature variations can make a big difference. And when your trainer starts to warm up, the power will change. So make sure you spend 5 to 10 minutes on the trainer ahead of time warming up that trainer. Then do a calibration spin down. It's also important to know some of the rules of your race. In most cases, uh, some of the Zwift online races are going to require that you register with uh, Zwift Power, create an account and sync those accounts. Uh, also, they want you to be accurate with stuff. Make sure your weight and your age are accurate. Some of them actually ask to see your Strava accounts, and if they see something out of the ordinary, they might ban you from races. So just make sure your stuff is set up accurately. Also, it's really important to have a heart rate monitor. If you don't have a heart rate monitor, you're probably going to get disqualified. So. Have your heart rate monitor, have your power trainer. Yeah, you need a power trainer or a power meter. Again, you'll get disqualified if you don't have some of those. Uh, and have that stuff ready to go. You're gonna select the race you wanna do in the right-hand corner here. You can also do it from your Zwift Companion app. That's what we've done here. Now we've selected the C race. The Boogeyman and I would typically do the B races, uh, but for tonight, for a couple reasons, we're gonna do the Cs. Number one, we wanna be able to talk while we're racing. It's kinda hard to do uh, when you're putting out four watts per kilogram. Number two, um, this isn't really a uh, race day for us. This is a kind of a uh, gentle day. We just did a lot of miles uh, over the past couple days and we want to take it a little bit easy today so we're not going to be killing it so we're doing the C's today. Now the key is here, make sure you don't go too hard. If you do, you will get disqualified. Uh, pick the right race for you. Uh, if you put out too much power, you'll get DQ'd. You get DQ'd too many times, they won't let you race those anymore. Uh, you put out too little power, you're going to be miserable and chasing the group the entire time. So select the race that's correct for you. After you've made sure you've got the correct race selected, choose ride. Now it should pop up on the left here and say, let's go. You want to go to your race event. Awesome. That's what I'm going to do. Now, you don't have to go when it tells you to. You can wait until the very last second. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and skip this and say no thanks. I have 2 minutes and 38 seconds and I can always select that join event button down at the bottom. This is a great opportunity though to get any last minute warm up in that you want to get in. You can go back into your screen and recalibrate if at any point in time you feel like your calibration is off. So all you have to do to do that is go into your menu, go back into your pairing screen, and then you can calibrate here if you want to. No, I'm fine. I don't need to calibrate. I already did. So we're good to go there. All right, with about 30 seconds left to go, I'm going to go ahead and join the event. Again, it's going to end my ride. You don't want to wait till the very last minute, because it does take a couple seconds to switch over. 
Now what you're going to see here is when it gets to about 10 seconds to go, 5 seconds to go, I'm going to start ramping up my power. And that's because even though I'm in the 2.5 to 3.1 watts per kilogram section here, well, it can start out pretty hot. See the boogeyman there rocking his Tron bike. That's him in the bright yellow bike there. Focus on your power output here. This race is supposed to be, I think, 2.5 to 3.1. Now notice, I've been going above 3.1 for a while. That's okay. But if you do that for too long, well, you're going to get disqualified. And that just sucks. But, the races usually start pretty hot, and then they calm down. Some go a lot longer. This one's pretty calm, pretty fast. It's not uncommon to hold well above the prescribed power, probably about five minutes or so, sometimes even longer. Way too much power. Like I said, we normally ride the B races, but I'd like to be able to talk through this. Now we're going to come up on a section that is normally a sprint segment. At least I think we are. People don't generally go for the sprints on these races. There's nothing to be won by that. So if, you, uh, if you're feeling crazy, go for it. But for the most part, just don't. Maybe on the last lap. Or hey, 
if you want to create a little break, go for it. Now you see, there's already a pretty good gap that's been formed here. And what's going to happen is, towards the end of this race, you're going to start shelling people like crazy. There's a lot of people that are just holding on right now. And that's okay, there's nothing wrong with that. Maybe there's some folks that are going a little outside their class. Maybe they're D's trying to step up the C's. Maybe like us, we're just taking a, uh, an easy day. But, just like in a regular race, you don't want to be caught behind that gap. Because it's pretty hard to close. Now I'm pretty sure that guy, he's gone. like a regular race, you don't want to be on the front. If I get on the front, I tend to drop my power on purpose. Now, in some of these races, the Boogeyman and I have jumped in on some of these C's or even B races, where there are folks pushing well above what they're supposed to. And you got a choice then. You can either follow, or you can just let them go. If you let them go, they might come back into the pack. If you follow, you both might get disqualified. Because if you're fighting it out at the front, and you're above that wattage, in the end, those results are gonna show you didn't finish. Also really important to know this is not a workout don't treat it like a workout it's not a workout this is a race I guarantee you in this race my average power will be above 200 watts per, uh, 200 watts for the race I've done full-on road races where I don't do that average wattage because you're sitting in going uphill, downhill. But in this race, you'll do that wattage. If you treat this like a workout, you're going to overcook yourself. So we tend to do one, maybe two, but usually only one swift race per week. And it's only fun. I think that's really important. It's only fun. Because, you know what? There's people on here that cheat. They say their weight's 45 kilograms, but they're actually 100 kilograms. People that have their power meters calibrated incorrectly. So if you try to compete against them, or get cranky that they're beating you, well, it kind of takes away from the point of this, which is to have fun. So make sure you're having fun. On the flip side of that, if you have a dropout, maybe your uh, hand plus dongle drops out or your internet drops out, if you're taking this really seriously, your day just got ruined. But if it's just fun and that gap opens up, well, it happens, you know? Last time I checked, nobody's here on Swift handing out full-time contracts to people that are racing in the seats. If it happens, you know, fall back to a grupetto or exit the, the race. 
still got to ride your bike. So you notice there's a large bunch of people here. It never really depends on the race. In some races, you have a bunch of people. Other times, the boogeyman and I showed up to a race, and there were two other folks. That's cool. But when there's large bunches of people like this, there is some strategy involved, just like there is on a road race. If you get stuck behind somebody, and they're going slow, <laughs> you're stuck you might be behind that gap. So if you get stuck behind one of those folks that's going slow, like I am right now, you gotta make sure, just like on the regular road, that you're able to put out a bit more power to get past them. Just for a moment, it only takes a second, but you gotta put out a lot. There are breakaways that happen, but unlike in regular road races or crits, if you break away and you do too much power, well, that's a disqualifier. So there's a lot of strategy about this. And probably the best thing that it makes you do is focus. And when you're doing a road race, two, three hour, four hour road race, oftentimes that's the hardest part staying focused. So, that's one of the best things about this, is practicing staying focused. And practicing talking to it for at once. And now you can see there's a gap opening up. play our cards right, we can keep that gap. This is where teamwork helps. Because nobody wants to be DQ'd because of too much power. So if we take turns on the front, we don't have to put out that much power, but we can keep the gap. Unfortunately, in this case, that gap did not stick. And you better believe that the Boogeyman and I definitely strategize while we're riding here side by side. If you're ever racing with us, I guarantee you I'm gonna lead him out for a sprint. You're gonna wanna be on my wheel. Also, because I can't sprint with crap, and he can. But I can hold you know, larger amounts of power for longer. So we work together, and it works. So what we're starting to see here is the race is kind of settling into a groove. Yeah, we're almost halfway through it. So that's when it tends to kind of do that. My power is super low right now. I'm not having to do anything to keep up. So I'm gonna let my heart rate dip down. Although talking and riding makes the heart rate go up. So, you know, whatever. But races tend to do this, even in real life, you know? First half of the race is pretty hot. Then it starts to calm down a little bit. 
and then people start jockeying for position. So it's kind of a ceasefire right now. Nobody's attacking, nobody's going too hard. Except the boogeyman over there for now four and a half, five, five and a half watts per kilogram. Yeah, he's gonna get disqualified. <laughs> But you know, that's one of the things that people get really frustrated about, is getting DQ'd. So, you know, if you race a couple races and you find yourself getting DQ'd, go up to the next group. If you're racing Ds, go to Cs. If you're racing Cs, go to Bs. If you're racing As and you get disqualified, <laughs> good on you. Now, one of the challenges that the Boogeyman and I face is that we're both small and light. We're climbers. We're not flat section, we're not sprinters, although we can sprint just fine. And the problem is, on these flat sections, watts are watts, man. So if the person in the front's doing 200 watts, I'm doing 200 watts. The difference is, 200 watts for me is three watts per kilogram. But if they're, you know, 100K, 200 watts of them is only two. So you gotta be careful about that. But one of the things that Boogie Man and I try to do is we really only try to race, you know, some of the races that have climbs in them. So if I'm doing 280, I'm only doing four and a half, four and a quarter watts per kilogram. If I'm in the knees, you know, I can do some climbs like that and not get disqualified. So pick the race that suits you well. And again, there's no shame in racing the seas and you know taking it easy. There is, in my opinion, shame in racing the seas and killing everybody, pushing the tempo past something that's realistic. That's just not cool. There's no shame in racing the beats and getting your butt dropped. I mean, hell, that happens most of the time with the man and I ride. We've won a couple few races so far, but only a couple, and we've raced a bunch. All right, so it's starting to string out. Somebody's kind of on the offensive here. We're gonna have to move up. like that, they don't hurt anybody. Right off the bat. And 
that was the lead-in. That wasn't the race. The race was flat. But by the time the actual race started, there were only two of us on the front. And the rest of the pack, who were thinking it was going to be a flat race, were a minute off. So just bear in mind, sometimes you get a little nasty surprise. You show up to the race, and it's a heck of a lot longer than you think it is. Four and a half K to go. So at this pace, about seven minutes. Again, the key is, let me use the energy you gotta use. What I plan on doing is when there's about one K to go, I'm gonna start pulling pretty hard for the boogeyman. He can jump on my wheel. And I'll pull pretty much till the 200 meter line he'll attack and go around, if everything works. But the key is, I gotta keep my power down until that point, but not get dropped. This is where things in the front group will continue to start animating up a little bit. Talking actually, you know, it's harder to do than you think when you're riding brings that heart rate right up. So I'm gonna shut up for about the next two and a half K. Get with it. And I'm 
Unfortunately, I got the boogeyman. Big breaks happen in a very short amount of time. You just gotta keep your eyes open. I turned my camera on in the middle of that. So if you're wondering why my heart rate's so high, eh, you can see all that red in there. So we were doing a 450, 500 there. Not a whole lot, but enough to get you awake. But what that tells me is that these two, these two guys up here, yeah, they're probably sandbagging just about as bad as I am. going to get a little shaky here. Yep. He elbow's going too soon. with racing. Remember, it's fun and it's hard, but it's not a workout. All right, so thanks for joining us for some Zwift racing. Uh, we're a little sweatier now than we were when we started. Like I said, always have your fans handy and uh, a little tired. So we're going to go uh, relax, probably watch some terrible movies, and maybe just uh, eat some junk food to equal all those calories we just burned. Thanks again for joining us. Make sure you uh, hit like or subscribe, you know, share with your friends. If you didn't like this video, again, I have to ask, why were you watching it? Don't watch it. If you don't like it, don't watch it. Uh, yeah, it's that simple. So hopefully you tune in for the next couple videos too. We're gonna show some more stuff on Zwift. We're gonna have a couple more product reviews and just all around some good old fashioned vlogging. Thanks a lot. See you soon.